Hi guys, it's uh, Ray here. Now in this quick training and podcast, I'm going to be talking about the three biggest mistakes goalkeepers make when they emulate their favourite professional goalkeeper. Now before I get into it, first of all I want to say it's an amazing thing to do and I really do recommend that you do emulate your favourite professional goalkeeper. I know that I'm sound like I'm contradicting myself, so please bear with me. So it is a, a good thing to do to emulate your favourite professional goalkeeper, but you've got to do it in a certain way. So before I break down the top three mistakes, let me sort of make the uh, let me explain the main mistake goalkeepers make, and it'll make sense when I go into the three top mistakes, if that makes sense. So the best make the the biggest and main mistake most goalkeepers uh, make is actually they follow their favourite, they only follow sorry their favourite professional goalkeeper, and it's normally the team that they support. So whether they support Liverpool or Everton, Man United, Man City, Celtic Rangers. Arsenal, Chelsea, etc. You tend to find that the goalkeepers will try to emulate, uh, obviously, the goalkeeper for the team that they support. And as I say, there's nothing wrong with that, guys, okay? But what I really recommend you do, uh, and again, you'll understand why I go into the three top mistakes in a moment, uh, what I really recommend you do is follow uh, as many professional goalkeepers as you can, uh, you, know, do, do, you know, whether it's the Premiership, you know, whether you're based in the United States, it's the MLS, etc. You know, look at every single goalkeeper because they've got to the level that you want to get to uh, obviously so it makes sense obviously to copy you know all these goalkeepers and just take bits out of obviously each goalkeeper and put it into your goalkeeping because that will make you a more rounded uh, goalkeeper as well and also as well I really recommend uh, and again you'll understand why when I go into the top three, three mistakes in a moment I really recommend that you try to emulate goalkeepers who are the same height and shape as yourself now I know if you you, you might only be like a young goalkeeper if you're only 10 12 15 16 16 uh, years of age you're only a child at the moment uh, you'll still probably have a rough idea how tall you're going to be because obviously your family your parents etc you know obviously so you, you've, got, you've got to have an idea that you're going to be you know six foot for example or you know you're going to be a certain weight and shape etc obviously based on your family genetics etc so what I would do is to say is yet yeah, still follow your favorite professional goalkeeper or as many goalkeepers as, as you can uh, but try and follow also goalkeepers that are going to be the same height and shape as yourself or or, you know as you get older if that makes sense and the height and shape that you're going to be uh, and again it'll, it'll, it'll make, make sense when I go into the three top mistakes uh, which I'm going to go into now so mistake number one as I say is you know uh, uh, goalkeepers try to emulate their favorite professional goalkeepers technique now here's the problem okay if the, your favorite professional goalkeeper is six foot five or six foot you know six foot six for example and you're going to grow to six foot or five foot eleven or whatever you know um their technique's going to be slightly they're, they're, it's going to be slightly different again it's not going to be hugely different it's only going to be like tiny 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 but at a professional level those tiny details just obviously um those tiny details mean, mean a lot if that makes sense so for example if a goalkeeper is six foot five for example uh you know and again this is not in all cases by the way okay guys so what i say here as i say you know uh, just because one six foot five it doesn't mean a goalkeeper who's six foot can't do it i'm just sort of uh, using this as a rule of thumb just to obviously give you some ideas here so for example a, a goalkeeper who's six foot five for example you know when they're narrowing their angles uh, for example they might not they need to come off the line as much uh, because obviously uh, oh, sorry they might come off the line uh, you know I, I half a yard more than what another goalkeeper would be because obviously the height the frame of them etc so they can afford to come uh, a bit more off off uh, off the line they might stand two yards off the line instead of one yard you know and again obviously it, it depends obviously where the uh, where the angle of the ball is where the shot's coming from you know see so they might be able to afford just to stand a bit further off the line because of their height also as well because of their height as well they might come for more crosses uh, than what uh, they might obviously because of their height and their uh, their uh, their stature for example you know they might be able to come for more crosses because obviously they're you know they're, they're so big and again but, but the opposite way as well you know so you could be six foot four six foot five and if you your favorite goalkeeper uh, in the premiership or whatever team you follow is only five foot eleven or six foot for example again as i say uh, because of height and weight and size etc you know uh, they, they'll do things differently you know uh, obviously to a, a bigger goalkeeper uh, as i say because obviously yet yeah, depending on your, your height your weight your size how fast you are etc 
you know, as I say, you'll do things slightly different than other goalkeepers who are a different stature, if you make if it makes sense. So that's why it's super important, as I say, yet yeah, still follow your favourite professional goalkeeper, but also follow other goalkeepers as well, and especially follow goalkeepers who are the same height and build as yourself, or as I say, even as you're a child, you know, you, 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 you've got an idea, you're going to be six foot one and, you know, X amount of weight, if that makes sense, you know, so follow goalkeepers who are, as I say, a similar, a similar stature to yourself or obviously that's where you're going to be when you're older so that's the first one as i say they, they follow their technique uh, and the second thing as well what they'll do is they actually copy what the professional goalkeepers wear now i'm not going to go into too much detail here because i've done other videos so subscribe to the channel or watch the videos or listen to the other podcasts where i actually explain the three biggest mistakes goalkeepers make um when they basically uh, choose their goalkeeping equipment but again just very very quickly what you've got to realize guys okay yeah you know um you know goalkeepers professional goalkeepers every single week they're playing on Perth, even when they're training as well, the playing surface is, is nice and soft. These grass, you know, you know, a lot of especially a lot of like grassroots fields, especially in the UK, and especially if the council run. Obviously, we all know, sadly, guys. Obviously, most councils don't obviously look after, you know, uh, facilities that good. Um, and as I say, so you know, for the for the most part, especially in the summer when we've had a winter, there's there's literally no grass on the fields, you know. Uh, as I say, so a professional goalkeeper is playing on a carpet that gets watered and it's super soft. You know, do we get that at grassroots level? You know, in the majority of countries around the world, no, we don't. Okay, yeah. Like I say, sadly, obviously, councils fast enough taking our money, guys. Okay, yeah. But uh, obviously, they're very, very slow when it comes to obviously, you know, improving infrastructure, especially for for our children. Um, but as I say, you know, I'm one of the things that I re really sort of worries me as a as a as a not only as a goalkeeper coach as a parent is when I see young goalkeepers wearing t-shirts. Uh, you know, short sleeve goalkeeping jerseys, and they're playing on a, on a playing surface. You know, with, with no grass, rock solid. You know, and it, it, that's a basically a recipe for disaster. They are going to get grass burns or mud burns. Uh, you know, uh, on the on the dry soil. And guys, that's I mean, I, I've broke many bones over the years playing in goal, and I'm telling you now, you know, uh, grass burns or you know, getting any type of burn for, uh, from the surface is is worse than breaking bones. It's beyond painful you know so that, again don't make that mistake guys again watch the other video if, if you're not it's uh, it's super important on you know the mistakes goalkeepers make when picking their goalkeeping equipment or especially mistakes parents make for their young goalkeepers again so again as i say guys yeah you should be very very careful because you've got to remember you're not playing on the same playing surface as a professional goalkeeper Third, uh, third mistake uh, goalkeepers make as well is they follow the communication, they emulate the commu uh, how their favourite professional goalkeeper communicates. Now, obviously, communicate communicating as a goalkeeper is super important but again it's got to be done correctly again i've done another video on how to communicate correctly again so just subscribe and obviously just go through the videos that we've done or obviously uh, the, uh, go through the episodes of the podcast but again if, if for example if the, your, your favorite professional goalkeeper is sort of like crazy you know screaming and shouting every few every every few seconds uh, you know uh, but your personality is different you know you're a, a quieter person you, you know you're a bit more you know you're not you're not you're not as crazy you know uh, again you're going to feel you know if you try to emulate if you're super quiet uh, and by the way, you can still be quiet as a goalkeeper and still communicate effectively. Again, please watch the video on how to communicate uh, correctly because a lot of goalkeepers are told the wrong thing. Uh, they're told that they, uh, they've got to talk for the full 90 minutes. You don't, okay? Actually, you do, uh, as I say, but most of the talk, and you, you talk to yourself, you keep yourself motivated, you keep yourself concentrating. You really only need to speak as a goalkeeper when it's important because if you talk 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 all the time your defenders will stop listening so you need to educate your defenders that when you talk they need to listen so you've got to talk at the right times if that makes sense so again the video that i've done on how to communicate uh, uh, properly uh, will be somewhere in in, in in the video library so go and check that out but as i say guys if you're if you're naturally quiet uh, and your goal your favorite professional goalkeeper is crazy and, and out there if you try to be like them, you're going to feel uncomfortable. Again, people that know you, they're going to go, come on, Ray. You know what I mean? As I say, it's going to sound a bit weird because it's just not like yourself. Uh, you know, so again, 
and it could be the opposite way as well. You know, if your favourite goalkeeper is quiet and relaxed, and and you're like, and you're a goalkeeper who's like, you know, cr I'm not gonna say crazy. I don't mean that in a bad way, okay? Because it's all different personalities. But if you're a goalkeeper that likes to scream and shout, etc., uh, and then you try and be calm, okay? Because it's not your personality. Again, it's not going to feel right, okay? So that's why it's super important that if your personality, you know, you're a bit quiet, etc., you know. Uh, emulate goalkeepers that are similar to your personality and nature uh, because you know a goalkeeper at perfect again you've only got to look at all the different goalkeepers at professional level especially you know in the premiership or the mls not every one of them are screaming and shouting you know for the full 90 minutes okay you know you'll find actually most of them are quite calm uh, they, they only communicate when they need to communicate so again that's your personality you're a bit calm and quiet emulate the professional goalkeepers that are calm and obviously you know calculated with their communications again someone who's got the same personality as yourself but again if you're the opposite and you're someone that loves to scream and shout and again there's nothing wrong with that as long as it's done properly again emulate those goalkeepers you know uh, you know um that you know obviously a similar character to yourself who obviously are screaming and shouting um uh, and again as long as obviously you, you, you're communing communicating the right words that's, that's the main thing so that's the three biggest mistakes goalkeepers make guys okay they try and emulate uh, their favorite goalkeeper's technique uh, how they dress and how they communicate now obviously these other bits and bobs uh, again i've only just mentioned the top three but the main as i say main mistake is most goalkeepers make is they only emulate their favorite professional goalkeeper and if their professional goalkeeper is a, is a different height different weight different personality etc Again, as I say, you know, I'm not saying don't emulate them, still emulate certain parts of their game that resonate with your personality and height and weight, etc. But don't emulate everything uh, everything that your professional favourite professional goalkeeper does just because they, they, they play for your favourite professional team, if that makes sense. It's super important that you, as I say, you know, uh, you know, look at all the goal. Again, you don't have to follow every goalkeeper because obviously that would be a bit too much, okay, yeah. But again, what I really recommend you do, you know, whatever league, you know, uh, obviously if you're following uh, your favourite professional goalkeeper, whatever league that they're in, obviously you're going to be watching your games, etc. Watch the other goalkeepers and what you'll find is that you might only get like two, three, four or five goalkeepers. It doesn't have to be a lot who are a similar height, weight and shape and personality to yourself or or that's what you're going to be when you're older, if that makes sense, when you grow to, to become an adult. Emulate those guys, okay, because that that they because that that's going to be more realistic and helpful for yourself because you're following someone and you're getting advice. Sorry, you're emulating someone who's the same height, shape, and personality uh, as yourself, and that will help you much, much more as a goalkeeper rather than just following one goalkeeper just because they play for your favourite team. Because remember as well, what you've got to be careful of as well is that you know your favourite goalkeeper might just play for your team for one year, two years, three years. And then they'll disappear, they'll go and sign for somebody else. And then the next goalkeeper will come in. You go, okay, I'll follow them now as well. You know, so you're limiting your obviously uh, ability to uh, obviously to, to progress because what you don't want to be doing is emulating uh, one professional goalkeeper's technique. They move on, another one comes in, then you emulate their technique as well. Uh, you know, as I say, you know, so what you're best doing is just as I say, pick goalkeepers, you know, that resonate with you, with the same height, personality, excess, like I've already explained. And just emulate them no matter what team they play for because then you're getting goalkeepers that are relatable to your height weight and personality like you keep saying but also as well as i say you could be you know you can follow them for 5 10 15 years you know obviously you, you know it doesn't matter what club they go and play for if you can obviously get some footage of them you know obviously playing you know you know em emulate those those goalkeepers so i hope that helps guys and again i'm going to stress you know it is super important to emulate your heroes okay yeah but just because you support as i say arsenal for example uh, and obviously you know chelsea's the enemy you know it doesn't mean that you you know that you can't learn from a, a goalkeeper who's who's an enemy if that makes sense because it's all about your abilities it's about enhancing your technique sorry 
uh, and, and your ability to make you um, a better goalkeeper uh, and as I say guys that's that that's the you know a, a really really good way to do it and again obviously if you if you can find a good goalkeeping coach as well you know speak to a, a goalkeeper you know um, your goalkeeping coach as well and say hey look these are the goalkeepers that I'm emulating you know what, what you think I should be doing you know obviously you, you, you coach me what you think I can learn from these guys and your goalkeeping coach can also uh, uh, best help you as well also just very quickly on goalkeeping coach they always get asked honestly all, all the time you know um you know right how can we find a good goalkeeping coach for my goalkeeping child they, obviously this is like for parents who try to come to j4k just for keepers uh, and obviously what you know even though that we're all over the world we're not in every city etc so obviously you know so for parents who you know where just for keepers is not is not there what i always say to you guys okay to parents and goalkeepers is look you know uh, there's obviously a lot of goalkeeping coaches out there but like anything in life you get the good the bad and the ugly okay yeah it's super important that you get a goalkeeping coach that knows what they're talking about even though there's a lot of fantastic goalkeeping coaches out there independent goalkeeper uh, independent goalkeeping coaches out there obviously doing the right things there's obviously goalkeeping coaches out there let's just say they, they should not be coaching uh, uh, goalkeepers especially young goalkeepers but they're out there unfortunately uh, so how as a parent how do you best protect your goalkeeping child uh, in terms of obviously making sure that they get the best goalkeeping coach and, not, and obviously I don't know every goalkeeping coach and you know if I can recommend a, a goalkeeping coach I will but obviously if it's a city that I don't know anyone the best advice I can give to parents and goalkeepers is find, try and find a goalkeeping coach with proven results okay doesn't matter what the website says it doesn't matter who they play for what qualifications they got etc okay yeah um, because obviously an independent goalkeeping coach it's their business they've got to sell themselves I get that I understand why they need to do that but the best way as a parent of a goalkeeper is just literally find a goalkeeping coach with or a goalkeeping organization with proven results okay because that's what you want for your goalkeeping child obviously you want them to develop you know and you know so if you go to a goalkeeping coach uh, and you know they can uh, obviously it's on their website for example you can see goalkeepers that have gone on to professional level or maybe gained a college scholarship or they've maybe won awards uh, etc you know they've gone to, on to higher levels whatever that might be that's the best way as a parent of a goalkeeper because I understand most parents of goalkeepers don't understand goalkeeping because it is such a specialist position uh, and it is very difficult obviously if you don't know what you're looking for uh, as I say um you know as a parent you know to pick picking the right goalkeeping coach so that's the best way as i say I, um, the best fastest advice i can give anyone is if you go to a goalkeeping coach with proven results for their current and ex -stu goalkeeping students who've gone on and had success uh, as, as as goalkeepers whether it's semi-professional professional college scholarships etc well you know then also you need a goalkeeping coach with the right contacts as well because there's no point going to a goalkeeping coach who might develop your goalkeeping child but they've not really got any interest or contacts to help so if you can find someone who's got the contacts and the proven results the chances are you found the right goalkeeping coach so i hope that helps guys okay yeah uh, so that's the top three mistakes goalkeepers make when they emulate uh, obviously their favorite professional goalkeeper now you know not to do that guys make sure that you emulate you know you know at least three or four maybe five professional goalkeepers and try and emulate the goalkeepers that are going to be they're going to be like the same height you know weight uh, and personality to yourself because that will be much much better uh, for your development so i hope that helps guys again if i've missed anything out here if you're watching this on youtube or whatever on social media please put your comments below uh, what other things what other mistakes you think young goal well, not, not just young goalkeepers older goalkeepers make you know what mistakes do goalkeepers make when they emulate their favorite professional goalkeeper and what would you recommend uh, goalkeepers do in terms of watching professional goalkeepers and semi-professional goalkeepers what you recommend that goalkeepers can do to obviously yeah you know enhance their own goalkeeping by watching uh, other professional and semi-professional goalkeepers hope that helps guys okay um keep working hard take care for now